So, if you've watched a few videos of my channel, you know that I'm a big fan of choices. I made a whole long series that did not need to be that long. I just did not know what I needed to be filming during that time. I just needed videos out for America's Most Eligible, one of the books of choices. And I've been a fan of choices for a very long time, truly since it started. I've been a fan of Pixelberry, the company that makes the game choices. Um, since like 2012, 2013, like I played their original game, High School Story, like the video game, I still have it on my phone when I was in like middle school or something, like when I was super young. Um, and then I like, I was a fan of Pixelberry before um, Hollywood U came out. That's how of an OG fan I am. And I played all of Hollywood U, I still also have the game on the phone. So I have been playing Choices since it debuted, which was one of my most favorite games because I was a big fan of Episode, but then Episode got really annoying. And I really, I don't like that game anymore. I hated the way that the gameplay worked and it doesn't matter. Um, but I don't play Episode anymore, but I played it a lot because I really liked the idea of a choose your own adventure game. So when Pixelberry, one of my favorite companies, um, came out with choices, I was like, oh my God, this is perfect. And they sort of led themselves and like marketed themselves as being like really inclusive of like having people of color and a lot of strong female characters and like people with different sexualities and all that stuff. So I was like, oh my god, like a good diverse game. This is perfect. And at the beginning, it was sort of like that, you know, there was um, not an overwhelming amount of white characters. There was a good amount of female characters, um, not really female love interest, but we'll get to that. Um, they have had not, they have had characters that aren't able-bodied, they've had asexual and aromantic characters, they've had like some of that and I feel like they are getting better, not really where I want them to be, but definitely when they first started, like I don't actually know how long Choices have been around, like four years? Uh, three or four years ago they were definitely like the only company sort of like leading this charge and I commend them for that. Um, but with the recent news, uh, that they have shut down truly all of my favorite stories. And with the growing amount of backlash towards them and the way that they treat um, their marginalized characters, I think it's time that we just, you know, we sit down, we have a chat. If you're not a fan of choices and you don't know what I'm talking about, that this video probably isn't for you. Thank you for staying this long anyways. For those of you who do like choices, play choices, and are a fan of choices, um, this, this video is for us to chat. Um, I have now finally caught up with choices because like a year or so ago I had played through all the books and then I'm not a patient person so I just got bored and just like tapped out of the game for a really long time. Now I'm back um, and I have played through all of their books now. I'm now just sort of waiting for new books to be released again. And there has been a very noticeable swing towards catering towards um, a straight white female audience and not that big of a fan of it. You know, it's a tad bit boring and the stories have not been the best. And especially since, like I said, they've been a company that's been like, yes, we're all about diversity. We're all about putting through these great, wonderful, diverse stories. The fact that they've killed off basically all of their diverse stories is not my favorite. There are a few books in Choices that I truly like loved. Like there's many that I liked and that I enjoyed playing through, but there are a handful of books in which I would particularly wait because I wouldn't have enough diamonds to get through the diamond options I really wanted to get through and it would just take me so long to get through certain books because I had to go play other books to get more diamonds to like invest in these books. There's like, the, those are the holy grail books in my mind. Um, and there are very few of those in the in the Choices universe to me. And they are all now dead. <laughs> so I am less inclined to be like, yay, Choices is great, because now they've truly killed off all their good books. And I think a lot of people think of, their, of the books like this, where they have like a certain amount of books that they truly love and that they'll invest their diamonds into, and then other ones that they just sort of play because they're easy to get through and then you get diamonds after you complete every chapter. Um, and I think that's just been given, that, that's that been giving the wrong message to Pixelberry because in their like press release thing where they said that they're shutting down all of the good books, they said it's because, um, they, they said it was like writers leaving, which is probably true. You can tell that some sequels have like way different writing because probably the writers left. Um, and you really need good writers to sort of like front and run a good story. I get that. Um, but they also said it's because um, some people aren't playing these books and 
they said that they have to invest in the stories in which everybody's playing because that makes them the most money. And I get that truly from like a uh, money and business and marketing standpoint, but also like I need them to understand that we don't play those books because they're good or because we like them. We play them because they give us diamonds. <laughs> there are so many books that I've just completely, just completely tapped through because I don't care about the story at all and I just needed to get through it so that I could get to the end, watch the ad and get my three diamonds so I can invest in the other good stories. And I think a lot of people play that, play it that way. We call it diamond mining. <laughs> if there's a name for it, I think that it should be pretty popular. But I don't think that Pixelberry really thinks of that when they're just going after what seems to be popular. But like, what is popular and what is well liked are very different things. And I hope that they realize that if we don't have the good books to invest our diamonds into, there's no reason for us to play these other bad books. And like, it truly is maybe like a 70-30 split for like good books being 30%. Um, because especially as of late, so many books have just been bad and even like the good books are getting bad. I was a really big fan of the Royal Romance when it first started because I thought, oh, this is cool, fun, quirky group of characters. Um, but then they had three books of that. And then they had three more books of the Royal Heir. Um, and now it's just bad. And I would not even think of picking any of the diamond options in those books because I just, I don't care. Um, I know a lot of people have had issues with that. I don't hate it as much as some of the other ones, but it was definitely bad. Witness, we all hate Witness, right? Witness was an awful, 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 horribly boring story. I think it started as a VIP um, book. We'll get to VIPs in a second. I think it started as a VIP book, which makes no sense of why there were so many fucking diamond options. I like, if it's a VIP book, they're already paying you money and you want to, you want them to give you more money just to basically play the game. Like if you're, if you did a no diamond run of Witness like I did, there was no story. There was literally no story and no reason to root for the two characters getting together at all. It was the dumbest. And I hated that main character. Oh my God, she was so annoying. Um, but I just, I played through that whole thing because I wanted the diamonds. It was an easy way to get diamonds. Especially now, if you finish a book, you get 15 diamonds. And if you're like me, you don't spend money on diamonds. I'm tempted to sometimes, but then I think of all the shitty things that Pixelberry has done to some of my favorite books, and I'm just like, why would I give them my money? Why would I give them my money? Um, I definitely have in the past, though. Maybe not specifically with choices, but with their other games. I've definitely given Pixelberry money specifically for diamonds so that I can get those, like, other scenes and whatever. So, like, I'm not above that. I'm not shaming anybody for it, but, like, truly now, I would not do that. Um, The Nanny Affair, we all don't like that book, right? Um, I definitely... Mm, I hate that story. I think it's weird. I definitely hate the stories in which they force um, a romantic partner onto you and you don't get to just like choose or even just choose not to be with them. Like in The Nanny Affair, you sort of just like have to be in this weird relationship with your boss and I'm like, no, no, thank you. I am good. All those stories, there are many stories at which you get to like romance your boss and I always say no thank you because I think that's very weird to try to like date somebody with that weird power dynamic you do you totally not for me though and the fact that they like force that onto you that you have to play through this game in which you are romancing your boss I think it's very weird especially since in that story she's like she's fully engaged she's fully engaged to somebody else oh my god yeah I just really did not like um not a fan of the nanny affair but I played through the whole thing because I got diamonds. Like a lot of people want to be like, oh, if you don't like it, then just like don't play it. But I'm like, there's a big incentive to play these bad books because you get the diamonds from them and you get those diamonds to spend on the good books. It's a whole vicious cycle, but I'm just very disappointed that all of my favorite books like were killed off. Hero, I played Hero when it first aired, like when the book when like the game first launched, it was one of the first few books. It was so interesting with like the, with the different art style and like the way that you became like a superhero. And like they fully promised a second book at the end of it. They were like, see what happens in hero book two. And then here we are four years later and they're like, actually we lied. <laughs> um, super heartbroken over that. Uh, they said ride or die isn't getting a second book. That I'm okay with. I totally get that like some people didn't like it because it was truly just like, forcing heterosexuality. There was like no female allies except for Mona and she was barely in the story. Um, I get it. That's very, is very upsetting for some people who, like I said, 
were going into this game thinking that there's going to be some diversity, there's going to be options for them, and it's just, like, not. But also, I did I don't know what a second book would be. The, the book felt very final in that, oh, okay, they all have to go their separate ways because, like, the FBI is after them. But I also thought that game was sort of stupid in general because the main character really tried to, like, or the writing really tried to give the same weight to being like, oh, I'm being hunted by this, like, gang, but I also have a math test. And I'm like, girl, your life was just threatened. You just drove off a bridge and you care about your chemistry grade? It was... <laughs> It was just very silly the way they tried to like still ground the story and being like she is just a random high schooler but I'm like she almost died and she cares about studying for school it was very silly um, but I was a big fan of the game just because in my mind it was like a trashy romance book in which you were like oh my god yeah I have to date this bad boy and my dad's a cop and he says no but he's so bad it was just funny to me in that way I didn't really take it that seriously but I did enjoy the book I felt like Colts storyline was super interesting um and that was the only like really substantial part of that story everything else was just sort of like trashy romance but i did enjoy that more than some of the other books that are just sort of like bad trashy romance like there's some that are like entertaining and have like cool fun moments to them but like witness it's just bad the nanny fair it's bad. Um, what else did they kill? They killed off Distant Shores. Distant Shores was so good. And literally, in the end of the first book, the main character goes back in time to go back on her adventures with the rest of the gang. And I'm just so disappointed that I had to, like, leave that. That book was so fun. And they did not force... They tried to, but they did not force... Is there a fly in this room? <laughs> They did not force a romance on me. At least I don't remember that, that happening. It was mainly just sort of like an ensemble piece. And I like those games. That game was so fun. They killed off Nightbound. I'm so fucking pissed off that they killed off Nightbound though. Because I I know a lot of people really love Bloodbound. I don't get why. It's not for me. I don't really like it. Um, I definitely thought Bloodbound was like one of those diamond mining books when I first read it. I did not read the first book at all. Truly just tapped through it. Didn't read a single dialogue option because I did not care. Um, I really tried to get into it though. I tried to give every book a fair shot, um, but Bloodbound just was not it. I started reading it though, because I've read through the whole series, because I've read, I played every book. I started reading towards the middle of the second book when Cal came in, because I had played, I had played and finished Nightbound before I got through Bloodbound, because I just found Bloodbound so boring. Um, I still sort of do. There will be a Bloodbound rant within this video. I filmed it at a different time, and it'll come later. But let me talk about Nightbound really quick. Nightbound was so good. Nightbound was my favorite, I think, supernatural book outside of It Lives. We haven't talked about It Lives yet because it has such a special place in my heart and I will get to it. Um, but Nightbound was so fucking good. Cal? Cal? Mmm, that man. I love Cal so much. Cal is probably in my top 10 love interest in all of the choices world because he was just so well written. He was like this cool uh, werewolf guy who's like tough, but he loves his brother and he plays the piano and writes poetry. Oh, what a man. I love Cal. Oh my God, what a, oh, what a love interest. I know that there are a few other love interests in that story. I don't remember because I only cared about Cal. Um, most of the time though, I'm gonna, I, I always try to romance the female love interest because most of the male love interests are just sort of like, oh. But Pixelberry rarely gives a female love interest the time that she deserves in the story for you to actually like care about her, get to know her, want to romance her. So most of the time I will just go for the male love interest, but never the, never the first male love interest because he's always annoying and boring. But usually the second love interest, the second male love interest over like the female love interest because she's just always done so dirty. And like, I do respect y'all who, who stick with that despite getting a disproportionate less amount of diamond scenes with that female love interest but most of the time I just can't I just can't do that um, because at the end of the day I'm just like oh it's a character and if I find the character interesting I will spend time with the character but point is Cal Cal was oof and the story itself was very interesting I love the I love the cast of characters um, you know a book is good if I'm paying diamonds to influence somebody else's romantic story. So many times Pixelberry will be like, do you want to spend 12 diamonds to help set up your friends? And I'm like, no, what? This doesn't affect me at all. 
I don't get to see these scenes. Why, why am I spending diamonds for somebody else? But if the book is good, I will do that. If the book is good, I will do that. And I did that for, I don't remember the name. I don't remember the names. It was the rock guy and then the elf bartender. I paid diamonds to get them together because I was like, ah, this story is good. Um, and then Ivy. That cast of characters was just so cool and sweet. Um, but point is, Cal has a crossover in Bloodbound, Nightbound, Bloodbound, live in the same universe. And when I saw Cal pop up as one of the character sprites, I was like, whoa, hold on, he's here? And I had to read through it. But then shortly after we fight alongside Cal and take down whoever it was that was keeping us captive, they gave me a 30 diamond scene. If you play Pixelberry, you know what a 30 diamond scene was. And I thought, oh, Cal's there. 30 diamond scene with Cal? No. It was a 30 diamond scene with all four of the other bitches and not Cal. Cal was not included in my 30 diamonds. I felt so robbed. I'm still angry about that. Um, so that made me a bit upset <laughs> at Bloodbound. It's sort of Pixelberry as a whole. They didn't say in the little blurb at the beginning that Cal would be included, but I thought it was implied that he was there at 30 diamonds. I thought it was implied that I would get the choice. <laughs> Choices. I thought there would be the choices, and it would include Cal. It didn't. So that all that just say that I love Cal. The fact that he his storyline has now died, and I will never see him again, is very upsetting to me. Um, but point is, Bloodbound. Once I saw Cal, that's when I started getting actually invested in the story and started actually reading along and trying to follow what was happening. Um, still don't really care about that story. Let's get into it. Actually, we have the time. I don't like any of those characters. A lot of people like to talk about um, Bloodbound and how they love all of the characters and how much they've been through. I truly don't care about a single one of them. I don't care about Jax, I don't care about Adrian, I don't care about Camilla, I don't care about Lily. I don't care about a single one of those characters. I find them all very boring. Hello, it is Sam from the past. I did not mean to be making this video, that's why I'm not set up properly. I just need to make this real quick, because bitches on Tumblr got me fucking heated. <laughs> yes, I am a gay as Augustine apologist. I don't care. I do not care. Do I need to be laying down all my morals for this white man? No. No, I don't. But <laughs> I like his character so much. As I will say in this video, um, I didn't I didn't care about the story at all. I didn't like any of the characters. Still don't really like any of the characters. Um, but I do like Gaius Augustine. He was the epitome of an enemies to lovers storyline that I never fully got. Because he was evil, but as we've seen, Rhea mind controlled him. So like, yeah, he did those things, but also he didn't mean to do those things. And you know who had that exact same storyline? Bucky Barnes. And you know who I absolutely adore? Bucky Barnes. I truly have no qualms about all the bad things that he's done. I don't care. I don't care. But all these dumbasses on Tumblr really want to get mad and be like, oh my god, you want to romance Gaius? What the fuck is wrong with you? Can, do you not remember all of the trauma that he put these people- y Yes and? Yes and? Yes, okay, he put uh, Camilla through all of that bullshit. Yes, he literally burnt down New York and killed millions and thousands of people for over many, many years. He even murdered me. And what? And what about it? And what the fuck about it? If I was given the diamond option, I would have taken it. No questions asked. It does not matter what he's done. I do not care. You know why? Because first and foremost, this is a video game. It's not real. A lot of you people take this shit a bit too seriously. I read this whole stupid post about how like, if you've ever romanced any of these characters and you want to also romance Gaius, you don't deserve them. And I'm like, babes, th these are two dimensional drawings. These aren't people. This is a video game, a free video game at that. You really need to calm down. These people be taking it a bit too seriously. Um, none of these people are real. Nobody's actually gotten hurt. Because it's a what? A video game. This is all fiction. And what you want to enjoy in fiction actually, spoiler alert, has no effect on real life. Hmm. It actually doesn't reflect on you as a person. You can like things in fiction and don't like them in real life. Like you can watch horror movies, 
like saw of people getting brutally murdered and not want people to get brutally murdered in real life. I know, fucking crazy. Um, that that being said, Gaius Augustine, a bad person. I can understand and recognize that. In real life, yeah, bad. Boo. Boo, Gaius Augustine. But in choices, in Blood Bouch Book 3, I deserved the opportunity to romance him. I deserved it. I would have put in the diamonds. If I could put in the diamonds to 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 fuck Dracula and to fuck Priya, I deserve to be able to romance Gaius Augustine. I think that the fact that I couldn't is already a crime, and the fact that people online want to shame me for it is even worse. Because, like, y'all be, first of all, taking this way too seriously. The fact that y'all are like, oh my god, he was like an actual monster. If you're, like, attracted to that, you're also a bad person. I'm like, please, it is not that deep. It, it doesn't go that deep, baby. It's true. I just think that the bad boy's hot. Okay, can I just leave it at that, please? Like, yes, he killed many people, but he was also mind controlled. And I think that just, I think that just sort of retcons everything. And he literally had a whole redemption arc. He had a whole redemption arc. And people really want to be against that and be like, um, he was still a bad person. I don't care about his redemption arc. That's fine. That's so valid. That's so valid. Your interpretation and your opinion is so valid. But then you cannot come at me and be like, no, he's not redeemed. He is in my heart. Gaius Augustine is fully redeemed. He said on the boat, because I did pay for that diamond scene, any option, any, I thought I might, no, I, no, I did not get that option. But I paid for that scene on the boat. And he was like, in another life, we might have been, you know, different. And I'm like, sir, what does that mean? Uh, Sir, what does that mean? Uh, But sadly, (laughs) I did not get the option. I did give him a little kiss of the cheek because that was the closest that I was going to get. But I deserve the option to romance Chaos Augustine. And I also deserve the option in real life to not be shamed by the internet for it. Okay? I am a Chaos Augustine apologist. I don't give a fuck what y'all bitches think. Okay? Because first of all, he's not real. He is not real. Okay? My opinions on this fictional two-dimensional character have no impact on real life. But I think also people really need to understand like like what happened with Gaius. It's like yes in a way he was um a bad person but like what white man in the 1500s was a good person okay? We really gotta we gotta meet in the middle you know? Like, there was this one comment that I saw that, that just really, like, minimized the issue to just, like, Rhea being mean to him. And I'm like, baby, he he was fully mind-controlled. Like, if you can understand how Rhea mind-controlled you, well, not you, because MC doesn't get mind-controlled, but the the main characters and how that was bad. But then she did the same thing to Gaius. But that's not acceptable. What's what's up with this? What's up with these double standards? Like, why can't I redeem my boy Gaius Augustine? I just think it's a bit ridiculous. I just think it's a bit ridiculous. I just think that everyone online trying to come for me, trying to be like, "Oh my God, you're so disgusting for wanting to." like this this toxic manipulative asshole and i'm just like i don't care (laughs) i don't care i don't care because he was the bad boy with the heart of gold that i adore (laughs) yes he was bad but you know what else he was sarcastic he was a little snippy with his comebacks and and (laughs) He sacrificed himself multiple times in that boss battle to save other people. And I think that's redeemed enough for me. And he said he would make me proud. And now that we're vampires, the fact that there's no like uh, after credit scene where I have the option to romance him, kind of rude. We're going to live for what, thousands of years? And you're telling me 
I don't get to sleep with him once? Come on. What the fuck is this? I know that my main ally is Camilla. <laughs> I know that they've had beef. I know that they have history. You think I care? No. Because you know what? I don't even really like Camilla. I didn't like any of the allies. <laughs> they were all very boring. But gay as Augustine? Ooh, now that man had some flavor. That man had some spice to his story. Along those same lines though, that there was somebody in the comments that I saw being like, yeah, go ahead and romance the guy who killed MC, which wouldn't be a toxic relationship at as fuck at all. Really should have double checked that spelling at the end. Um, yeah, it might have been toxic, but you know what else this relationship would have been? Not real. Therefore, who cares? Who cares? You think I'm playing a video game to have the epitome of healthy relationships? No, I'm playing it to have fun. And you know where that fun comes from? From being messy, from starting drama. You think I chose to push away Camilla's hand and take the power from everybody in that auditorium because I want to be a good person? No, 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 no. I'm here for the drama, baby. I'm here for the- I'm here for the chaos. I'm here to become the goddess of blood, which they wouldn't let me do. Still very angry about that. I don't care if it would have been toxic. I- I'm not here for a good relationship. I'm here for a fun time. I'm here for a fun time. But apparently I'm not allowed to do that. Because in the real world, that'd be bad. But this isn't the real world, it's a video game. <laughs> Where, if not video games, can I romance toxic men? <laughs> you want me to do it in the real world? In the middle of a panoramic? Get the fuck out of my face. That shit just pissed me the fuck off, that's all I had to say. I don't care about any of the characters. But you know who I really did like? Gaius. You know who I spent 15 diamonds to talk to? Gaius. It might actually be Gaius, but I think it's Gaius. I'm gonna say his name however I choose to say it, cause choices. Um, but I didn't spend diamond options on anybody else in that story, except for when we were at Raya's party, Raya, Raya. I think it's Raya. We're gonna say Raya. Um, but except for when we were at Rhea's party and I got that 50 diamond scene. <laughs> That's all we have to say about that. Yes, I did spend 50 diamonds on that because I, I will always choose that. <laughs> we're not here to be shamed. If you came here to shame me, you can leave. Um, this is a safe space for all of your bad choices. Good and bad. For all of your choices, this is a safe space. So you're not going to shame me for the choices that I made. Bloodbound. <laughs> Anyways, the only time that I spent diamonds on that book, between the three, the whole series, including the Winter Solstice miniseries, I spent the 50 diamonds in that scene, and then the 15 diamonds to talk to Gaius, because I love Gaius so much. Oh no, that's a lie. I spent 12 diamonds. I spent 12 diamonds to sleep with Dracula, and I spent 12 diamonds to sleep with Priya. Okay, d you can't judge me. <laughs> Will I spend a single diamond on any of the main characters? No, because they're boring. But I did spend diamonds on all of the villains because I do like them. Granted, I didn't really know Priya or Dracula was going to be a villain when I slept with them, but it's fine. It's fine. But as you can see, I'm spending diamonds on the villains because I find them the most interesting part of the story. I do not care about any of the main characters, literally at all. Oh, actually, that's a lie. I did actually spend more diamonds than that. Um, I, I, got, I really got into the book come the third one. I did really like the third book because Takashi, I fucking love that character. We barely got to know him, but the idea that he really, he sacrificed all of his life and his happiness in America so that Jax could be happy and then Jax thought he was dead. It was just a whole thing. So I did spend the extra diamonds to pick up Takashi sword for Jax, and I did spend the extra diamonds to give Takashi a proper burial, but that was it. That's all I did. <laughs> I'm not a liar. I'm just forgetful. Um, so that really pissed me off when at the end of the story, Jax fucking dies. <sighs> that really pissed me the fuck off, mate. I was so mad that I invested so many diamonds into his character having a long and happy life and getting closure around his father, but then he just dies. He dies for me. And I'm like, why? Why couldn't it have been Adrian? I don't like Adrian. Why couldn't it have been Adrian? Why did it have to be Jax? I was very upset about that considering he was the one character that I sort of invested diamonds in, mostly just for Takashi, because I respected that man so greatly that I felt I needed to give him diamonds. 
I'm also very against, in general, spending diamonds to advance the plot. Like, if you get diamonds for a diamond scene that gets you more, like, in foreign affairs diplomacy points or um, just anything that'll help, like, your XP bar or whatever, I'm generally against that because I feel like that's just sort of, like, buying your way to a win. Or, like, if you spend diamonds on an outfit that gets you more points in, like, the upcoming quest, I think that's all very silly. Um, I'm, I also don't just spend diamonds on outfits because I made that big mistake in the royal romance when I married Hannah and I spent 30 diamonds on that dress that really made no difference in the story. I never spent diamonds on clothes again. <laughs> I only spend diamonds on scenes um, except for in uh, Blades of Light and Shadow in which I will spend diamonds on the side quest that I guess does improve um, the story but I mostly just I like the side quest I think that they're fun. I will also sometimes get like points if it happens to be attached to a scene I already want to do like in foreign affairs if there is a what's it called like if I can spend diamonds to go spend time with Blaine but that also gets me diplomacy points with Evelyn then that's what I'm gonna do because first and foremost I like the scenes whatever comes after that I don't really care about but like whatever you get what I'm saying but I think Bloodbound again is a worse and less interesting story than Nightbound but they canceled Nightbound when they can continue to write Bloodbound why shouldn't it be the same people it's in the same universe shouldn't it be like sim I don't get why is it because not enough people were playing it I don't understand I think definitely there is a large majority, like I said at the beginning, a large majority of straight white women that enjoy playing these worst books because they see themselves reflected in them and they're very generic. Um, but definitely for the people who came for the diversity, we ain't getting any of that anymore. Um, and I think that's pretty lame because they do this thing, as you know, you play choices. Um, where you can sometimes, if there's a love interest, you can choose like their race and you can sometimes choose their gender. Um, but even then, as many people have pointed out, they are still written as if they are white men, no matter what you choose them to look like, which really is kind of sort of like a big colorblind casting moment where it's like, you can't be blind to color because then you're blind to the issues that these characters would face and how these situations would be handled differently based on the person that they are. But I talk about that in my other choices video that I made recently about how there's a scene in My Two First Loves in which like police brutality is brought up and they tried to do it colorblind and that doesn't make any sense because police brutality is very much a race dependent issue. So you can't just like write that with these characters who I made all black. My whole cast was black. Mason, Jackson, and Ava were all black in my story. And you can't just like write it the same way you would write it as if these characters were all white because the way that they interact with the police is very different. And I don't think Pixelberry gets that. I don't think that they notice that when they're writing and it's kind of annoying. Cause you can see that a lot of the times if I'm like playing a, if I'm playing um, a game in which the love interest is like defaulted to white male and I make them like a female and just like their vibes are like weird and off. Like I was playing, what's it called? The Royal Masquerade and I made Hunter and Kated both women. But you can just tell in their vibes and in their writing that they're not written as women and the way that they handled themselves in the court is not the same. It's just not fun. It's not fun. Um, what else did they kill off? It Lives. Oh my god. Okay, let's get into it. It Lives is probably my favorite choice of story ever. Um, the It Lives series is so good. And that's coming from a person who is terrified of horror. I hate horror things because they give me so much anxiety and I'm already a very anxious person that I cannot handle horror things most of the time. But It Lives is the perfect amount of like scary without triggering a panic attack, which is my perfect level of horror. Um, I love the first one. I felt like the first one's writing was a bit weirdly paced. There's a bit too many characters in my mind trying to like balance them all in the story was a bit hard because you don't really get to know all of them especially since I was trying to romance Andy. Still love that man. I miss him every day. Um, and I barely saw him. I think I paid that one diamond scene to like cheer him on his basketball game but he really only got maybe one or two diamond scenes and it was just so lame because I never got to see him. I really wanted to romance uh, Ava the I'm pretty sure that's her name the goth one she was super cool but she was like truly never in the story that I was like I guess I just won't romance her um 
But even then, Andy barely got any screen time, and I just... It's a shame. It's a true shame, but I felt like the story behind it was still very cool and interesting, and I liked all the characters. But then you get to It Lives Beneath, and It Lives Beneath is, I think, their best book ever. I think that that book is truly phenomenal. The suspense, the pacing was perfect, the character uh, pool got smaller, so it's just a group of four? Yeah, there's four love interests, and then there's you which I think was perfect. Um, I thought that the side characters were great. Uh, the grandpa was a great character. Um, Elliot was a wonderful little brother. I think we can all agree he is the best sibling that um, Pixelberry has ever written. His love story with um, Richard's son, what's his name? I don't fucking remember. But they were so great. I spent diamonds on them so that they could have a good, wonderful romance because I love them together. And I just truly loved that story so much. It was such a good story. It had actual consequences. That's a thing that I really love. Because most of the time in choices, it just sort of like course corrects and it won't let you really make any bad choices. Um, but in It Lives, if you don't make good choices, people get hurt and people die. <laughs> like there are real consequences if you're not making the right choices, which I think is super interesting. Like, like I was saying in that clip about Bloodbound, um, I wasn't allowed to become the the goddess of blood. I wasn't allowed to make the bad choice and become the villain like I wanted to. But in It Lives, if you fuck up, there are consequences. It's not just like, oh, you have to be the good guy. You have to have a good ending. There are real consequences if you're not playing the game right, which I think is super fun and interesting. Many of the games do not have that because most of them are just sort of like romance games and there's no real way to do it wrong, um, which is kind of like lame, but I get it. It's like... They're, they're different stories for different people, and I can respect that. But when they come to having these more adventure fantasy horror games, I want those stakes in there. And I don't feel like Bloodbound had any of that. That's why I found it really boring. But It Lives was so good. It Lives was so good, especially since, um, like I said, I don't spend diamonds really to get... I didn't spend any of the diamonds to get like those extra items and stuff, because I don't believe in like sort of like paying your way to winning. So by like... Like, pre the final boss battle, if your group isn't at, like, a high enough, like, what's it called, sanity or stress level, then one of your characters has to go. And my character was Parker, which was perfect, because he was a white man and he was a cop. And I was like, goodbye. And then the rest of the story was absolutely perfect. I got my two women and the love of my life, Tomoichi Sato. I love that man so much. Oh my god. Um, so that was an absolutely perfect game for me. I don't like, I don't dislike Parker, but I just feel like out of the four characters, if one of them had to go, Parker was a perfect person to leave. I completely forget the other two characters' names. There was the, the rich girl and then the photographer girl. I don't remember because I didn't romance them. Um, but I felt like they were all great additions to the story and that the whole idea of like the monster fighting was super fun, having to save the town from your dead grandmother was super interesting. Just like the story was super good, super well paced, actually like suspenseful and intense and all of the characters were well written. It was a perfect book. And let's go on a little tangent about Tom. Tom is in my top three LIs ever. I just love him so much. I spent all the diamond options on him I've played back, this is, I actually, I don't play back choices books, mostly just because I think that they're sort of boring once you know, like, what's going to happen, the same reason I don't actually, like, reread books or rewatch shows or stuff, because I just find it a little bit boring if you already know what's going to happen, um, but I did play back It Lives just so I could see Tom again. That's how much I love that man. There's only two books I've replayed, and I replayed It Lives because it was good, and I replayed um, the road trip one for the the freshman series because once I got to the end of the freshman, oh my fucking god, that series is so long for no fucking reason. Um, once I got to like the end of the freshman series, I had been romancing Caitlyn the whole time and Caitlyn was really getting on my nerves, but there was no point in that time to like break up with her. <laughs> um, which I also find really annoying. If at some point you start disliking your ally, you can't just like in real life be like, okay, I don't want to do this and start romancing somebody else. Like a lot of the times they will lock you into romancing somebody, which I think is super ridiculous, especially in like Bloodbound. Um, and in other supernatural stories in which polyamory makes perfect sense for these characters and it doesn't make any sense for you to be like, okay, pick one love interest. I'm like, why? First of all, I don't like any of these people. I don't like any of them. Uh, and there's no, and there was no, no option, which I found very annoying. But yes, point is the only, uh, books that I've replayed have been It Lives for Tom and then the Freshman Road Trip series, um, so that I could romance Zig and so I could diamond mine that book. 
because uh, it's generally shorter than like a lot of the other books. Um, so when I say that I love Tom, I mean I love him so much. My top three love interest, Tomoichi Sato. Love that man with my whole fucking heart. He was cute, he was nerdy, and he was so strong. He was so ripped, and he was protective. Oh, love that man. The way that that book ended though pissed me off. You're telling me that we are, me and my boyfriend are both going to college after this massive trauma that we both had, and we're not going to the same school? What? You're telling me that one of us wouldn't transfer so that we would beat each other's emotional support system since we're the only people who understand the full weight of having to save the world? Made no fucking sense. Made no fucking sense. I didn't like that. Didn't like that ending. So now the fact that we're never gonna get a third book to see them get back together really pisses me off. Really pisses me off. Especially since at the end of the second book, there was a teaser for the third book where you see Lindsay at the table talking to Noah, maybe somebody, and they're talking about like what happened at Westchester, I think their school was called. So like they truly had intentions to make a third book, but then they just did it and they, now they just lied. And I don't like liars. I really don't like liars. And there would be no conflict of interest because sometimes like in the high school, in the high school story series, um, they have to have you make like a second character and you want that character to have a different name than your first character because if they're living in the same universe, they can't be the same person. I name all my MCs after me because if you're not playing them as self-insert fanfics, I don't know what you're doing. Um, but in It Lives in the Woods, I chose for my character to die in place of Noah so that I could be, what's it called, Red Redfield? Um, so my main character was already dead. So there would be no conflict. It's not like both me's are alive. One of them's dead. Um, so that was fine. So the fact, I point is I love Tom. Um, one of my favorite love interests ever. He was so well written and so lovely. And the fact that I never really got a true moment to actually like spend time with him and get to know him because we, we were sort of focused on the main plot of like saving the world, which I get totally understandable. But the fact that I never got like a third book to like really just spend time with Tom really pissed me off. Especially since in the in the early days, which you won't know unless you've been playing Choices for a very long time like I have, they used to have like, I think there were like 30 diamond books where you, for the freshman series specifically, where you got to just spend time with your ally and you got to just spend like a whole book hanging out with them. And like, I don't know why they stopped doing that. Were people not paying for them? Um, because I want that for the allies that you just killed off. Like... I would love to spend 30 diamonds just to spend time with Tom. Let me do that. But no, they stopped doing that. Anyways, love Tom. Um, Michael Harrison from High School Story. Absolute love of my life. Um, love that man, miss that man. The fact that they're... They didn't, they didn't officially say that they're canceling High School Story though. That wasn't on the list of the things that they said they were gonna cancel. And I think that they need to come back and give us a three book series for the main cast of High School Story senior year. Cause it doesn't make any sense. Cause they were sophomores in the first series for them. And then in class act, they were juniors. And then they said, that's it. And I'm like, the main cast of characters, the ones that I have truly been with from like 2013 back in actual High School Story, these people who I love so dearly that I have known these characters forever. I don't get to see them in their senior year. You're telling me that there's no story there? Like they've done high school books before in which these characters were in their senior year, but never like the way that they've written high school story. Like, did they lose their writers for that? Like how, why can't I spend my senior year with the love of my life, Michael Harrison? I spent so many diamonds on that man. I say that I don't spend diamonds on clothes. And I don't really anymore, um, unless it's like, a, a, unless it's for a love interest that I really, really, really love. Then I'll be stupid and spend some diamonds on clothes for them. Um, but for Michael Harrison, for homecoming and for prom, I spent those extra diamonds to get those nice outfits for him. Um, because I just, Michael was such a good, well-written character. And I know, now I, we don't know for sure that I'll never see him, knock on wood. I'm hoping that we get a final book, at least one book. I think we can make it a three book series for their senior year. Because they were touching on those themes in class act where, um, oh, what's his name? The guy with the family trouble and he was the stage director. Hmm. Names out my mind. There's so many characters, my God. Um, but he was talking about like trying to get into college and stuff and they were touching sort of on those themes, but they were like, 
I think the characters in Class Act were sophomores themselves. So they didn't really need to be thinking and worrying about all that. But I think that if the main cast of High School Story was going into their senior year, it'd be very interesting to see the ways that they try to navigate their relationships as coming into adulthood. But it's not up to me, I guess. I just think that that'd be a great, interesting story. And I want to see Michael one last time. Because I was so pissed off when we got class act and it was just a whole new group of characters. It was like Degrassi. It was like, I don't care about these people. I don't care about these people. I love Skye. Ah, oh, she is my goth emo girlfriend and I love her. But I do not like her as much as I like Michael. Michael was just so great. And I just, I miss him. I miss him a lot. Um, but top two love interest. Top three. It's not necessarily like in this order, but like my top, my, my third favorite love interest is Dakota Winchester from um, With Every Heartbeat. Love her so much. She was so well written. That book was so good. And like as much as I would love a second book of it, it doesn't make any sense because Dakota is in fact dead. Um, but I did spend, I spent so many diamonds on the book. Literally every single diamond option, including the stupid outfits, I spent. I spent every single diamond object because I was like, any moment with Dakota is a moment worth experiencing because I knew she was going to die. Um, so, oh, it's just, oh, that was a really good story. And I think that it probably will just be one standalone book, which I get and understand and appreciate. And I think that for that one book that it was, they did a really good job telling that story. I will miss Dakota greatly. She was so lovely. I, she was, oh, what a good character. Um... And I think also in the top 10 is Jackson or Noah, Noah Harris from My Two First Loves. You can see I have a type. He is, Jackson was just such a good character, especially compared to Mason who fucking sucked. I talk about it in the video, so I don't need to get into it now, but I love Jackson. Um, played through that whole story and was uh, very disappointed <laughs> with the way that the pacing went because they really tried to make it like a slow burn but it was just the dumbest slow burn because it truly went on for way too long they they tried to do a hundred chapters which didn't make any sense when each chapter was like four minutes I'm like please just consolidate some of them didn't need to be like that many chapters I know how I talk about my video how I liked how they were short and I did because I didn't want to invest that much time into you know playing the video game all at once um, but like looking back, you don't need a hundred chapters. If you wanted to make it a hundred chapters, then like you need to write a story worth a hundred chapters. It was not worth all of that time to like be waiting for that. Um, but they tried something new and I respect that and whatever, blah, 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 blah. But I did not like the way that that story ended because it was truly just like 99 chapters of being like, who am I going to choose? When I knew from like chapter two that I was going to choose Jackson and I never wavered from that decision. And then you only get like one chapter actually committed to them. That was stupid. Uh, it was like a whole lot of build up with like zero payoff. It was really dumb. Um, but yeah, truly, those are my top love interests. As you can see, only one of them is female. Um, and that was by my design. <laughs> the, oh, the Elementalist. I have to fucking even talk about the Elementalist. Um, I really fucking love that game. I think it's so fun. The way that you have to like really pay attention to your surroundings and know which spells you need to use and the fact that there are so many spells to use and you have all these really fun and interesting characters. Um, I think the Elementalist is the only book that's ever had an asexual or an aromantic character. Zeph King, love that man. Um, but that book was just so good. I loved the Elementalist, both of them. Um, and in the second book, they sort of tease the fact that, oh, our mother, the the sun god, is back. And we're going to, you know, reconnect with our mother and like learn and about like our powers and who we are and now there's now they've cancelled it. Now there's no book. Now there's no book. I think that's super fucking lame. Cause it was truly the Hogwarts fantasy. And now we have nothing. Now we have nothing. Maybe a new good book will happen because I don't hate all the new books right now. Foreign Affairs is okay. Um the pacing's a bit weird. I also just don't like waiting for a book to to be released. Because truly between weeks, I will forget everything that's happened. Um, as we can see from this video in which I will just forget sentences after I've said something. Um, open Heart I really like. Again, not they don't treat their female allies well at all. They never get enough screen time. Um, I really wanted to romance Kyra. But she is never in the story, so I'm romancing Bryce. Um, you would say, why not romance Jackie? I think it's weird to date your roommates. 
I think it's weird to date your roommates. Um, and also Jackie's heavily in the story, but Bryce, Bryce was in the story. Um, again, why can I not make it official with Bryce? I think we all have an issue with this, don't we? Um, but my heart goes out to all of y'all trying to romance Raphael. <laughs> that man, oh, never the story. Um, because they all want us to fucking romance Ethan. He's our boss, and also not interesting or attractive at all. Um, Bryce is at least fun. Ethan has nothing going for him. Um, but they always try to push Ethan. That's the most annoying thing, when they really try to push a character onto you. Especially if it's a character I don't like. Ugh. So obnoxious and annoying. But we're on our- we're on open heart book three. I'm still not able to make it official with my- with Bryce, which I think is super lame. Like, there are so many times when, like, I want to make it official with characters, like with Bryce, with Jackson, and they just won't let me. They just won't let me. And I think that's super lame. But then there's times where I don't want to make it official with anybody, and there's no option to say no. <laughs> there wasn't, like, the elementalist. I think that there was at some point in which you were like, you could choose to- there was a book in which that was an option, in which I got to be romanceless, and I really liked that. I completely forget which one it was. I think it was Elementless. Um, but point is, they really need to be giving us these options. Like, if I want to make it official sooner, I should be able to make it official sooner. If I don't want to make it official ever, then I, I should also have that option. Um, but Open Heart's not bad. Um, I do think that the weird way that they're writing Ethan is annoying, the way that they're trying to pit us against Harper is stupid, especially since I'm not romancing Ethan. I'm not jealous at all. You really try to put two women of color against each other? Please stop. <laughs> Please stop. What else is coming out? Um, that's it. It's just that and Baby Bump. Baby Bump fucking sucks. I hate Baby Bump so much. It is the most boring story ever. I hate all of the love interests. You can either date, what was his name, Clint or Myra, and both of them are the... It's like talking to a brick wall. They are the most boring characters ever. I hate all of the conflicts. They're all so stupid. I just, oh my god, I hate Baby Bump. It is the worst book. But I play it because it gives me diamonds. Oh, I haven't even talked about VIP. Let's talk about VIPs. Uh, VIPs are just another money grab for Pixelberry to get your money. It's like $15 a month for you to get like extra diamonds and extra keys or whatever. And I just think it's the silliest thing in the world. Um, especially if you're like, isn't the whole thing, it's not unlimited diamonds, because that would be too much. It's unlimited keys, um, which I think is so dumb because there's a finite amount of books that you can read. Um, are you just replaying books to like watch the ads to get more diamonds? Like, I think that's so silly. Like, I get with the VIPs with each chapter ending, you get two extra diamonds, and I guess that's sort of an incentive, but I also just think. I personally will not give Pixelberry any more of my money, especially since they're killing off all of my favorite characters and all my favorite books. So I just see no point in giving them my money. Um, but especially since it's not like a diamond deal, it's like a key deal, which doesn't make... There, like, especially if you if you played off the books like me, there's nothing to do with keys. You just sort of have to wait for them to put out more books. Um, but... I guess with VIP you also get like VIP exclusive books, but like as we've seen there are VIP books that they eventually take off of VIP so that we can play them. Like, what was a VIP book? Witness was a VIP book. So fucking stupid. Um, I think Hot Couture was a VIP book. Um, it wasn't the worst. It wasn't good or interesting, but it wasn't the worst book I've ever played. Um, but that just seems so silly that, like, you are paying money for these books that are, like, worse than their other books. I think it's because, again, these VIP things are catering towards these this white, straight female audience in which these very generic stories about them having to, you know, be fashion designers or have this bodyguard romance are very interesting to them. But, like, that's all that there is in media. I don't get how this is any different. Um, but, you know, if it makes them money, that's all they care about. Just to me, very boring, I don't care. I'm not fully willing to, you know, give up on choices until all of the books are bad, you know? Because I don't gain anything out of just, you know, swearing off all of their books. Because, like like it said in the press release, that, the, that they have to cancel some books because people aren't playing them. So if we don't play any of the books, then that doesn't really help anybody. And, you know, I'm just gonna keep playing it, truly, um, until... I hate it, like episode. So we'll see how long that takes. But a few books coming out are good. Um, I haven't finished Blades of Light and Shadow yet though, because that has so many diamond options that I do not have the diamonds for that yet. But I'm slowly making my way through it. Um, they said they're gonna make another one of Blades of Light and Shadow, and so far I really like this book. 
Um, that's why I'm spending all my diamonds on it. It's pretty good. Um, I really loved um, the year of mother, mother's first year, something, the one in which you're a mom and then your kid really likes science and you have an ex-husband named Guy. I, that book was so good. Um, I really didn't think I was going to like that book. But I found just like the daughter such like a wonderful, interesting character and all the love interests were good. And like the PTA drama was just like fun. It was fun, um, low stakes, but generally just like comes with the territory of the genre. So I found it was really great and interesting. Levi, I love Levi. Levi was such a good and interesting character. I love Levi. It was such a good thing that I liked Levi too because there was no way I was going to romance, um, what's her name, Aiko? There's no way I was going to romance Aiko or that lawyer guy because I think it's just weird in the context of the story to be dating somebody who was your daughter's teacher or your daughter's best friend's dad. I think that's all just a bit weird. Um, so Levi just seemed like the great, uh, like just as his place in the story seemed like a great alternative, but also Levi was just my favorite out of the three of them. So Levi's great. Hopefully we get a second book of that because that story was just so good. And like, obviously there's more story my child is still growing up. Um, so hopefully we get another book of that because that book was actually very good. Was very surprised at that book. Um, but that's really it. Those are all the books that I'm looking forward to is that one motherhood series book, um, Blades of Light and Shadow and Open Heart. Three books. They are coming out with a new one though. On the 26th, they're coming out with a, with a chef book, which might be interesting. Um, we'll see. But yeah, I, it's just very clear to me that Pixelberry is on like a down, a down turn. And hopefully they can get some new writers, they can get some more money, and they can start making more interesting books again. Um, but so far, all we have are really just bad books. And that's kind of disappointing. Um, I do not want to see them turn into episode, but based on their ads, they're already on their way there. <laughs>